What's up guys, it's Chad Landis bringing you another map rundown for tips and general strategies, Burning Shrine for Trials of Osiris in the Game of Destiny. Now with how this map is made, it's actually not filling a lot of the screen, so what we're going to do is fill it instead with this picture of a waving bear. Deal with it. Now this map is made by Orion the Titan, once again, shout out to him, Reddit user, so Reddit slash R slash U slash Orion the Titan, or whatever you do for Reddit lookup users, Orion the Titan is his name. All in word, no underscores. Burning Shrine is like the OG map for Trials of Osiris. It's a favorite map for very many people, including myself. It's the first map that I went flawless on on the first week that Trials was available for the House of Wolves era. I've made drastic changes and improvements since then. I'm really surprised I went flawless that first week I tried it. But honestly, I feel like a lot of those people feel the same way I do. It's interesting to look back at how a lot of the players in the community were actually really bad on coordinated back then. And nowadays, people are way more coordinated than they ever were before. So the general competition competition has just as a whole stepped up and became a lot stronger. So while you're getting better, your opponents are getting better too. The basic layout for this map is Alpha spawns in the outside area and Bravo spawns inside. The objective is near the B cap but it's on the other side of the pillar than in control. For a basic sense of how it works, Bravo spawn controls the inside of the map, Alpha spawn controls the outside of the map. It's on the job of Alpha spawn to get inside and take the objective area to win out the rounds. It's actually very rare that it goes to the objective timer on this map. As always, be sure to know general callouts for this map. It's always incredibly useful because knowing is half the battle, to quote G.I. Joe. And it really is, not a joke. It's a huge deal to know exact callout location so you can call out specific information so your teammates know what to look out for and exactly when. You don't want your teammate wandering around having no idea where the enemy is when you said like, hey, they're at the special box over there. It could be this special box, this one, or this one. Or you could say they're at A special, C special, or inside heavy special. They know exactly where the enemy is so they know exactly where the game plan is for the whole team. Your callouts don't have to be exactly what this map shows as listings. This map just gives suggestions in case you have no idea what to call a certain location. Overall, as long as your team knows what you're calling out specifically, it doesn't matter what you're saying it is as long as they know what you are saying. The general strategies for alpha spawn if they're sniping is either to hard scope out in the freaking sun area behind a lot of head glitches, notoriously it's near this with the outside C stairway right here, or in this box area right here which people kind of just call head glitch rock. There's another term people use for head glitch rock but we'll keep it PG for this video. The reason why alpha spawn sits out in the sun area is a huge advantage not only because of head glitches but also because with a giant sun behind them out in this area back here, everybody from Bravo spawn inside trying to look out will be blinded by the sunlight so it's hard in itself just to see the other players and on top of that they're hiding behind head glitches. So they have a huge advantage on sniper battles against you. So if the players in alpha spawn are sitting out there just camping and hard scoping in the sun, Bravo spawn has the objective so you have the luxury of being able to sit around and make sure that they have to push towards you. That does lead to some stressful games because a lot of people are going to have supers and you don't really know exactly when alpha is going to push on you. So sure it could be a stressful environment however you should know that you have the advantage if you're on Bravo spawn camping on the inside. Alpha has to push to you advantage. Eventually. Another common tactic that Alpha uses is that they push into the C special area and try to snipe either up through the stair area or across the pillar area up to the bridge or across to A special. What Bravo spawn does as snipers is they go towards the C flag area to try to snipe over to the stairwells. They go up to the A bridge area to try to snipe towards this door here. Or they'll go over towards A special area and either snipe out to the sun or snipe across towards C special. So be sure to look out for snipers at C flag, A bridge, or a special if you're on alpha spawn. Of course, then the Bravo spawn will have to look out for snipers anywhere out in the freaking sun area or around the C special. There's not much else to really cover regarding snipers in this map. You should know where those general locations you'll be finding them are, so kind of avoid the areas that they can easily see you. So don't just run straight down the C stairs here. Don't just blindly throw yourself out in the sun area. Usually those are bad ideas. What I will say though is lately due to the meta shifts, it actually does seem like shotgunners have an advantage on this map, which is really odd because this map has has seemed to be a sniper heavy focused map a lot in the past. But for the trials runs with viewers I did today, I actually ran shotgun the entire time and I felt really powerful on this map. I of course ran the meta loadout of a Mida multi-tool, shotgun, and a storm caller. Also did some sunbreaker action with Mida and a shotgun as well. Both felt very strong. Storm caller more so than the sunbreaker for me because that melee is kind of ridiculous and the super is a little bit more reliable than the sunbreaker super from my experience. However of course the sunbreaker wins in the realm of grenades and maneuverability in the air. 
here. So it kind of balanced out, but I still felt stronger on a Stormcrawler. The Mind just lets you be able to move so fast, and there's a lot of angles and little like maneuverability areas, a lot of hallways, a lot of doorways to go through. So with rapid movement with the Mind and Multi-Tool, you'll be able to go all the map really fast, and it's going to be really hard for the other team to keep track of you. Excluding this outside area, everybody is really close quarters for the most part on the inside part of this map. So shotgun reigns supreme, especially those long-range Stormcaller melees. Overall, then you can find success on pretty much every single subclass except for Sunsingers on this map, and it's really because Sunsingers are simply just the weakest class in Trials, especially in my opinion, but also the opinion of the general public. So as long as you're not playing as a Sunsinger, you should have general success on this map. There's a lot of walls for spike grenades, lightning grenades, trip mines. There's a lot of close quarter things for stuff like action bolts, storm grenades, scatter grenades, and there's a lot of doors and hallways to throw your sticky grenades through pretty accurately on the other people. So grenade wise, you're good on pretty much every subclass. Super wise, you're also pretty much good on every subclass because there's a lot of tight areas for strikers and nova bombs to be successful. There's also a lot of open areas, especially outside for stuff like Stormcaller, Sunbreakers, and Blade Dancers to be successful to dodge those counter supers. What I generally do as a shotgun on this map is I push in through Alpha over to the C area to try to test on first round what the enemy team's kind of doing. If they're sitting around C flag a lot and I'm not very successful with pushing on them, then I'll go towards pillar and middle area and try get an angle from a bridge over to them sitting around c cap if they're sitting around the middle area then i usually take advantage of c bridge and push over to the inside heavy through c cap and get an angle for a bridge and middle area from there they're usually not used to you flanking them from the inside when you're spawning on the outside again that's a huge advantage with the mighty multi-tool movement speed to get me in those positions really fast so they're not expecting it if you're slowly meandering over towards the c cap to try to get a flank they'll probably catch on by radar and be able to prepare for you and it's not going to be as successful if i'm having a lot of difficulty with this c side push then i'll usually push over to the a side and maybe sometimes to the middle i don't really like pushing through the middle a lot because if another player is sitting at a special area one player is sitting around low hall and another player is pushing through c there's three areas of directions that i have to deal with i generally have to pick one location to push on and if i'm hard pushing from the middle towards a location most cases the other player is going to be just rearing on the back foot and shooting me down their primary there are some situations where you gotta go through the middle just to throw off the other team and force them to respect the fact that you might go through the mill at some points. So even though it's not as successful from my experience, it's still good to do it every once in a while to keep the other team guessing. So if I push over to the A special from outside Alpha, then I'll push around to the A special, try to get a picker on A wheel or A stairs, and I'll take control usually at A bridge or towards the Bravo spawn, depending on the location of the other players. And beyond those initial locations I go to, it really matters based on what my team is doing and what the other team's doing. You kind of have to adapt beyond the first initial start off locations. My general strategy for Bravo is to push over towards the C special area, because generally there's a lot of hard scopers there that can catch off Guard. I'll typically push through the A bridge to try to jump over the doorway for A bridge right here. And as I jump over, I'll get a little glimpse to see if they're kind of hard scoping the doorway or whatnot. I'll get some early information for whether or not they're pushing into this room or if they're camping outside. Of course, they might be just be late, but still it's good to look at it. But I do that remember as I'm jumping through here so I don't get picked off by a sniper in the doorway if I'm just slow peeking around the corner. And after I jump over that, I generally blow up the exploding box that's sitting right here to make sure they don't use that on me when I push towards them into their C special area. You don't want to be that guy who dies through explosion box. I'll usually push through C-wheel area. Sometimes I'll look for an angle over at the C-stairs. The decision making there is generally based on the information I gained from previous rounds and on the loadouts. If they're all really hard scoping C-wheel and really ready for people in the middle, I'll try to look for like a C-stairs approach leading with grenades. And if they're pushing up C stairs a lot, they'll generally either try gun them down from C flag or wrap around from C wheel and throw up some grenades towards them. If they're camping outside a lot, then I'll generally push out through a special doorway really fast with the Mind of Multi-Tool and either bunny hopping as a warlock with a focus burst or titan skating. With that combos, I can generally get outside really fast, faster than they expect, and I can get out to this doorway area right here, this hallway, this nook, before they get to their hard scope head glitching areas. So I can be up in their business and cause a lot of chaos and throw them off really hard to disrupt their lines and kind of dance around, not really looking for kills personally, but just to throw them off and break up their lines so they can't really hard scope very easily, which enables my team to be able to push very effectively. And then after my team follows up, then I follow up my team and get a lot of kills. If you go out there with the mindset of, I need to get a lot of kills straight away in this game, then you're probably gonna get picked off by hard scopers 
who are setting up on the camping spots already. You generally will die for your efforts. But if you just cause some chaos, disrupt the lines for your team to be enabled, and then follow up your team, you should be preset. To perfectly illustrate this for you, I have a video set up to where I pushed out through the A special doorways and did nothing but just try to disrupt the enemy lines, enable my team to be following up, and then never tunnel vision on a specific kill, keeping my eyes peeled, just causing pressure, and then following up when the pressure is weak on me and on my team instead. I allow myself to be able to just cause chaos, draw the attention of the enemy team, when the enemy team's attention is on my teammates instead, then I come in, shoot at people, etc. So watch and enjoy. Trials of Osiris. Bravo team. Eliminate your opponents and claim victory. Guardian town. enemies have been eliminated so going in there i had no intention whatsoever for getting a kill i was just causing chaos and disrupting the alliance of the enemy team i pulled all the attention of the enemy team onto myself initially to enable my teammates and after i noticed that attention was off of me and onto my teammates again i tried pushing pressure on that hunter to getting chased by skip grenades couldn't quite kill him before he got away didn't tunnel on it got away again Pressure was back on me from another hunter. I wrapped around immediately to another location. Notice pressure was on my teammates. Finished off that hunter that pressured me just a second ago. Luckily, my teammates cleaned up one kill right off the bat. So the initial chaos I caused was worth the effort. And after I got the quick res, I pushed into the middle room. Notice he was hard scoping. So I just full launched myself towards him and shot him in the face. He probably had no idea I was there until the last second before he died. So that's a good lesson to not always tunnel on kills. That guy tunneled with his hard scope and that's how he died. I didn't ever tunnel for a single kill the entire round and it worked out perfectly for our team. So always keep your eyes open. Know that sometimes that kill is not yours to have. So you maybe need to get out for a second relieve some pressure, and then get back in the fight later. Last thing for me to cover is general map heavy ammo round strategies that I have. For alpha spawn, I'll push into C door over towards the middle area. I'll lead in with grenades and test out how the enemy team's playing. If I can push in towards the A bridge area and shoot them with Midas, if my team's pressure at C cap or something, then perfect. If my team's with me or at A cap, then I'll probably also push towards A cap to try to get an angle from their spawn. Or I might myself route back over to C cap to try to get some angles. Again, try to cause some chaos on the other team. Team. You're really looking for when the enemy team is disrupted in their lines, so you'll have an advantage when you push onto them. If chaos assumes and they don't have a very good form in their own cooperation with each other, then typically you can pick off some stragglers at the very least and pressure in after you get a first pick. I really enjoy pushing when I have a super on this map, and if the other team seems like they're actually really good in cooperating with each other, and the rounds are like 3-2, I don't have a super, or maybe sometimes if I do have a super I'm really respecting the enemy team, that might just play heavy from outside spawn for sure. But it's only if I'm an alpha spawn because it seems to be a little bit harder to push onto heavy from alpha spawn. However, from bravo spawn, it seems really easy to push onto the outside heavy every single time. The path thing I pretty much always take is going straight over to the bridge over to the C special doorway here. Now gun down people either sitting out in the beach area or on top of the heavy box. I do that especially if my team is pushing out through Azores or or through middle. If my teammates are all going out to sea as well, then I will be the person that pushes out through A doors typically. Every once in a while, I'll push out through middle. I hope this video helped you in some way to improve your game for the Burning Shrine map on Trials of Cyrus and the Game of Destiny. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. That'd be awesome. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or praise, leave a comment down below. Hit me up on Twitter at Chilance TV. Or hit me up on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chatlance, where I'm doing my live streams, where I help out viewers going to the lighthouse. Thank you so much for being you, and thank you, as always, for watching.